So from the day we started, we had a clear intention that we would use restorative practices. Mm -hmm. This is because as parents, from shortly before the time the child was actually born, we had made a commitment to not use any kind of punishments, nor any kind of reward, mm -hmm. because a reward is just a punishment backwards. So exactly. saying, I'll give you this chocolate. If you do this, is the same as saying, if you don't do this, I will not give you the chocolate. It was a little bit difficult because we had been so conditioned to deal with things in a sort of retributive way. You know, somebody has done something wrong, there should be a punishment for that. And to overcome that trauma in a way was a struggle. And sometimes you stumble and you have this instinctive reaction to do something to punish, like take something away or, or something. And then you realize that you messed up and then you try to make things up. But the good thing was that by the time it came to start in the school, we had been on that journey uh, for a fair while, so we were more comfortable now extending this also to children who are not our children. Mm -hmm. So it's been part of the way we do things from the day we started. And the principle is that if you have been hurt in some way, you're sad, you're angry, you're frustrated, any sort of negative emotion, and usually it means that somebody has done something that made you feel that way, but it isn't always that. I mean, you might be sad because you remember your grandmother who passed away, which was external. But anytime somebody feels some hurt, you can reach out either just informally on a one-to-one -one basis, mm -hmm. or if you need the additional support, then in a slightly more formal council sort of setting. Mm -hmm. And the idea is the person who was hurt says their story mm -hmm. this happened this made me feel like this whatever it is and then if that action involves somebody doing something we would clarify okay you know this is their story of what happened what is your story mm -hmm. and sometimes some you know additional nuances come up because the initial complaint was you know this person pushed me but then the backstory might be that well i know i had been asking for a turn with this for like so many times and this person wasn't doing it and then i got frustrated and i pushed the person so then if something like that emerges, it then goes back to the other person to also think, okay, now you have heard how this person felt when they asked several times and you hadn't responded to them. How do you feel now after hearing that? So we mm -hmm. go through understanding our feelings, others listening to the feelings. And then the question is, now that we understand what had happened and the emotions or feelings around it, what do we think should happen mm -hmm. in order to make things right? And sometimes the fact that we've heard each other is enough and there's nothing else needed. Sometimes there is an apology or a hug or something like that. Or sometimes there is some kind of reparation mechanism. Okay, you broke this, you should replace it or something like that. But unless there was some, I don't know, very deliberate intent on the person to break or damage something usually doesn't go to that reparation level mm -hmm. because I think the key part of it is that in the normal justice system you label somebody as the perpetrator as the wrongdoer and you distance them from the community you make them a part of it right. and in the restorative process we don't do that labeling we just acknowledge that harm has happened mm -hmm. different people may have contributed in different ways to this either in terms of doing something or in terms of not doing something mm -hmm. and then we just collectively try to address the harm so this supposed perpetrator is also part of the community and feels heard respected empathized with so they want to be with the community again because this community is not trying to hurt them they want to come in and that eventually helps them to understand that an apology isn't just about saying the words because mm -hmm. this happened with the new child where he was saying he was sorry but we could sort of sense that he's saying it more of habit than with any remorse and it was also evident because he used to do the same thing again whereas if you were genuinely repentant you would make an effort to improve and this came coming up that you know you mm -hmm. keep saying this but we can't trust you and if you want us to trust you then you have to keep your promise This is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg. <laughs>